We begin here at five with verdict watch in the trial of James Crumbly. In just the past hour, a question from the jury, but it wasn't read in open court. The question now, will there be a verdict tonight? Thanks for joining us. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. We don't know what the jurors wanted answered. We do know, though, that they asked to stay past 430 so that they continue deliberating. Right now, family members of those killed by the Oxford shooter are staying close to the courtroom, as you can imagine, just like our Sean Lay to see what these nine women and six men decide, Sean. Okay, here's where we're at at 5 o'clock, guys. Towards the 4 o'clock hour, the jury did tell the court back in the jury room, not in open court, that they wanted to deliberate past 4.30. 4.30, kind of the cutoff time for Judge Matthews if they're not close. Now they've just indicated, and we are working our sources left and right here. Uh, they have just indicated, again, behind closed doors, but sources are confirming that they have told the court and the judge, not in open court, but they've told they want to deliberate now past 5, and it's 5 o'clock right now as we speak. We saw the prosecution team, the entire team, close to the front door around the corner of the of the uh, uh, the courtroom to see and they were sticking close for a while and then they have gone away uh, but it feels like perhaps they are getting close because they want to deliberate past 5 p.m on pins and needles of course family members of any oxford school shooting victims and i had a chance to speak with justin Schilling's father craig Schilling, just a short time ago about what was different in this case than the jennifer crumley case that stood out to him the, the biggest thing that I noticed was the, the, the pace of the, the whole trial. Mm -hmm. um, it, everything seemed like it was more condensed. I don't, I don't know if it was because it was already out there or if it, you know, the judge had some kind of a, you know, influence on that to, to make it. You know, I don't, I don't know that, but um, I know that the, the defense themselves had um, a little bit more. It seemed like they had more organization, mm -hmm. um, and so that, that, that kind of the process is what stood out to me more. I mean, that there wasn't a, a ton of different evidence or. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I really thought, like, in, the, in closing, in the rebuttal, on the closing, how, you know, Karen with the, the gun lock was just just a, an, an awesome point to make and um, really hammered home to how easy it could have, I mean, 10 seconds is all it would have taken. All right, back here live. Check out that on clickondetroit.com. What Craig Schilling is talking about is the final images and words left to this jury by Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald when she picked up the actual murder weapon and put the actual cable lock on it that was not used to secure that gun feels uh, the jury is indicating they're going to uh, deliberate past five o'clock it's now 502 we are on this guys mara mcdonald is in the courtroom paula tupman is in the courtroom i'll go back up there and we'll see what shakes out it feels like they may be getting close yeah it certainly does and, and we'll let you go and get back in there sean we'll check back in with you at okay. six o'clock thank you jury's going to stay with it we will too our coverage of the crumbly trial is going to continue over this next 90 minutes of news ahead at 5 30 our christy mcdonald is in with expert insight into what these longer deliberations can mean for the outcome of the case that's ahead at 5 30. Scan the QR code on the lower left portion of your screen here. It is going to take you to a special timeline that the team at Click on Detroit uh, has put together detailing what James Crumbly did on the day of the shooting, minute by minute. You can also find the story on the homepage right now.